My name is Jocelyn Harrington. I'm a graduate student from George Mason University in Virginia. Jocelyn, what are you studying at Oxford? I'm taking two tutorials. One is uh, comparative health law, comparing US and UK health law. And the other is comparative health systems, looking at the structure um, and services provided by the NHS compared to the United States healthcare system. How does your study in the UK relate to your studies in America? There is an ongoing debate in America about whether we should move towards a more universal healthcare system, something perhaps more like one of the European systems. And um, I was curious about that. So I'm here to learn a little bit more about the NHS and how it's structured and the uh, legal um, underpinnings for the system, just so that I can decide for myself what I think about that question. And I thought it is interesting to learn among people who have a uh, national health care system since we don't have that at home. Earlier on you mentioned the tutorials. Yes. Can you tell us uh, any big difference between um, your university and the Oxford University education system? Well, Oxford is very unique. Um, the tutorial system is something that very few schools do. Um, I think maybe one or two universities in the states have it, but um, it's really unique to Oxford and it's hard to explain to people from home um, what the tutorial system is all about. It's much more student directed. Um, I've met with my tutors and explained to them the things that I'm interested in and we've built the course around things that are interesting to me. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lot of reading. <laughs> Um, and it's very challenging because you get to go very in-depth on a topic that is of particular interest to you uh, and then talk about what you've learned with someone who knows it better and can question what you've understood and make sure that you um, are getting what you should be getting out of the reading. Um, it's very intense. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, and the essay process is also very intense and um, it makes you a better writer, makes you more concise, and um, really helps to focus your understanding of a topic. You know, in a uh, British education system, uh, essay writing is very, very important, mm -hmm. right from early stages at school. Uh, is it the same in America? There is a lot of emphasis on writing skills um, in America, particularly at the college and graduate level, but um, I think the level of scrutiny for the written product here is much higher than it is at home. Uh, and I think that comes back to the fact that you're working one-on-one -on -one with an instructor or with a tutor rather than um, in a class of 20 or 30 people. I hope you will gain, gain lots of confidence after all this uh, tutorial and all, all this different uh, training. Yeah. If, yes, I think so. How does the UK health system compare with that of the USA? It's structurally, it's very different. Um, in the US, we have a model that's based on private insurance. People buy health insurance from private health care companies um, and then go out and um, get health care from private uh, doctors or hospitals. Um, in the UK you have the NHS where the government employs doctors, owns the hospitals and provides health care to the population at its own expense. Um, that's st a structural difference. Um, so people who are citizens here in the UK don't have to worry about how they're going to pay for health care. Um, in the states that is a it's a major issue for a lot of people um, especially people who have chronic illnesses because uh, they have difficulty paying for their care. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a cultural and um, and political difference as well. It could be the case that some poor people may feel that they can't afford to see uh, doctor afford to see doctors mm -hmm. regularly. Is it the case? Yes, we have um, we have a program in the states called Medicaid, which is supposed to help the poor pay for health care. But because of the way that the system is set up, um, it's not comprehensive care that takes care of people um, and makes sure that their their disease is managed. 
Uh, it tends to be more episodic, meaning when they get sick, they go get care. Um, with the NHS, because you don't have to worry about whether you're going to be able to pay for care, your disease can be managed um, much more carefully. Um, the United States spends close to 18% of its GDP on health care, um, and we have poorer outcomes. The NHS spends 9% of GDP on um, health care and has much better health, health outcomes. So you're getting, here in the, in the UK, you're getting better results for less money, which I think is very intriguing. It's one of the things I wanted to learn about. What difference has Barack Obama made to USA healthcare system? Uh, well, he's had a major impact. The probably the signature piece of legislation from his first term was uh, a healthcare reform bill, which will uh, ensure access to insurance for millions more Americans who couldn't have it before. We had a, roughly 15% of our population was uninsured, and. Um, the health care reform package that was passed in 2010 uh, will give those that population access to insurance. It won't guarantee that everyone gets health care, but it should make it easier for people to be able to pay for it. And that's uh, certainly a step in the right direction. Could you tell us the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? Medicare and Medicaid are two programs in the United States to um, provide insurance that is paid for by the government to specific populations. The Medicare program covers the elderly, it covers uh, people over the age of 65. Um, it is funded by a specific tax that workers pay and the government um, pays benefits on behalf of the elderly to the doctors and hospitals that treat them. Um, the Medicaid program, on the other hand, is a federal and state partnership. The, the federal government and the states share the cost of that program roughly on a 50-50 basis, but it covers a number of populations. It covers the, the poor, um, poor children, patients with end-stage renal disease, the blind, chronically disabled patients and um, elderly in long-term care, for instance, nursing homes. Um, it's a, it tends to vary a bit more because we have 50 states, therefore we have 50 Medicaid programs. But um, one of the things that, uh, that Barack Obama's health reform package has done is expand the coverage under Medicaid to apply to a broader population. So folks who can't afford private insurance um, in the regular market will be eligible to use Medicaid. So that's one of the ways he's going to expand uh, health care coverage in the states. What's next? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, right now I'm going to enjoy my time here at Oxford. Uh, I've been really enjoying it so far and really thinking about applying for a, a studentship for a DPhil. Um, but at the time, my, my plan is to go back to the States and uh, take what I've learned and, and try to make healthcare better for Americans. You have enjoyed Oxford life so far. Uh, I'd like to know how you relax. That's one of the biggest challenges of being a student at Oxford. Um, time management skills are really important here. Um, I like to take advantage of the student tickets to concerts at the Sheldonian. I've gone to a couple of those. Um, I go to the Oxford Union debates and uh, meet other students there. And um, that's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> so Oxford University students often talk about work hard and play hard. Do yes. you like that? I do. I think it fits. <laughs> yeah. We definitely work hard, so you need some time to play too. Thank you very much for being with us, Voices from Oxford. Thank you, Dr. Kim.